Today's guest will be, you know him, Marvel Knights event comics, just so much painkiller, Jane, just so much, and we're going to talk about it all, I promise you. Please welcome brother Jimmy Palmiati. How you doing? All right, good, Eric. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And again, man, I appreciate you so much for joining us today because I did get a chance to pick your brain the other day, but even there's some more things that I, of course, want to discuss and I think would be uh, very substantive for the audience as well. So I usually ask this for my first time guests that are in comics. I usually ask them the same question, and that is how did you get into comics, fall in favor with it, as well as what was your first kind of professional gig in comics? Sure. Well, I, you know, I, so I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I have uh, three brothers. And uh, so comic books, I have two older brothers, and they, comic books have always been around the house. They've always been, uh, <clears throat> whether it's, you know, my old, my brother's having them, I was, I was getting them, I... You know, back then my parents probably bought them, so we'd be quiet for a little while. <laughs> and um, and my uncle had a barbershop, which had a ton of comics in it. Um, so I got into them at a very early age and managed to meet a couple of friends that also collected comics. And uh, I was lucky enough to um, have a comic store not too far from my house. So it kind of like supplied my my habit. Um, and, I, and I loved them and I, and I loved drawing. So I used to just sit there and I used to copy the drawings and the comics. That's I used to do that. Like I was the quiet kid in my family where I would sit at the table and I would just draw, try to copy the art that I liked. And, uh, you know, eventually um, I got to go to the uh, high school of art and design in New York and I took cartooning there. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I actually uh, in 11th and 12th grade, I actually picked up some work ghosting for other artists. So there were like professional artists working around Manhattan. I would go to their place and I would help them finish the books. So there was a couple of guys like Dave Simons and Chick Stone and a couple of other people. And I, so I, so when I was in high school, I was actually working on comics. Um, but I realized that uh, it doesn't pay well. The guys I was working with, <laughs> they were basically like living from check to check. And I was like, I was like, wait, these are the guys like doing major work and they can't, they can't pay the bills. I'm like, there's gotta be something up with this. And uh so I got out of comics, I went to college and took advertising and design. And then I started working out of college. I worked at an ad agency in New York for a good, I think, uh, like almost eight years and uh, did very well, you know, had clients that were like Pepsi Cola and Maybelline and uh, design movie posters with Bill Gold for uh, Mel Paso, which was Clint Eastwood's company. We did a lot of different advertising. Nice. But when I was getting around 30, I was doing some I was doing some side comic stuff for some indie companies. But when I turned 30, I was like, you know, I don't want to do advertising anymore. I really want to do comics. And I think I got it figured out. You know, I think I think I got to figure out a way to figure out a way to make money to do this for a living. And I wanted to break into uh, anywhere, Marvel, DC, anybody. Um, and I had a buddy I went to high school, Mark Texera. And you might know Mark from he's the guy that drew the Marvel Knights Punisher mm -hmm. series. And he, at the time, he was penciling and inking Punisher and Ghost Rider monthly. So doing that for two books a month is was killing him. So he asked me to help him. And I came in and I said, sure, I'll, I'll help you as long as we can work in the Marvel offices. And uh, so every night I would finish my regular job. I'd go up to Marvel right on Park Avenue and 27th Street. I'd sit in the bullpen and I would work on his books. I would say till at least midnight, one in the morning. They had a 24 hour security guard there. So you can come and go as you please. Oh, nice. Um, and I helped him do a lot of books, get a lot of deadlines met. And while I was up there, I would stop into each office where the editors were. And I would, every couple of weeks, I would leave them my samples. You know, I would say, hey, if you, if you need anybody, or if you're in a fix, I can help you. And eventually I got known as the guy that can help get a deadline hit. And, and uh, the editors started using me. So when I eventually I started going up there and I'd walk down the office through the office and people would come out of their office and say, hey, Jimmy, when you got a minute, come see me before you leave. And eventually I was picking up inking work left and right. And I did some penciling work, too, but mostly it was inking work. And from there, it just I just started getting books like like I had started having uh which is the ultimate compliment. I started having pencils ask me to ink their stuff. You know, oh, some of my man. first jobs were like over Dennis Cowan, 
and uh, whole and uh, Mike, you know, I worked with. Well, actually, Mike Barron was writing the uh, Punisher books I was working on. Um, but like, I started picking up work, and from there, you know, started meeting people, and I took what I learned in advertising, and I applied it to the comics field. So, even though I was only an inker on the books, I, I made it my business to make sure people knew who I was, and you know, that, that went into, I met Joe Casado, we started doing work together. And then when the image guys did their big launch, Joe and I decided, well, we can do that too. And uh, <laughs> we're just yeah. two guys from New York and we put our money together and we launched event comics with Ash and Painkiller Jane. And yeah, I've been working ever since. I mean, I, I you know, I freelance wise, I work for everybody. Right. You know, I work for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image. Oh my God, IDW, everybody, boom. Every, pretty much every company you can, uh, you know, think of. I did this because I needed to get my rate up. And every time I moved to another gig, I would ask for five or 10 bucks more. So as I was jumping from job to job, I kept asking for a raise. And um, and that, that still continues. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of, um, uh, you know, I, I had, I want to say I've, I've been in doing this for so long, I, I I don't really remember half of what I do until I go to a convention and people stick a stack of books down and I'm like, Oh yeah, I did that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I, I, I having my own company and then we got pulled in for Marvel nights, uh, mm -hmm. cause Marvel was in chapter 11 and, uh, they would reach They were desperate for anything. So they reached out to Joe and I, and, um, and then we, we just took a bunch of friends that we knew like Mark and, uh, Christopher priest and Kevin Smith. And we, we did four books and we just said, we're going to make these books better than they do. them. You know, mm. we're going to make them stand out. And, um, and that was a big success. And then, and then Marvel got out of chapter 11, Disney bought them for a bazillion dollars. <laughs> and um, I, that was my time to go. I was like, okay, you know, I did what I had to do. And ever since then I switched over to writing less, less on the art side, more on the writing side. And I've been doing pretty good ever since my company is paper films which is basically me, Amanda, and a couple of friends. And um, yeah, and we've been, I've been working freelance ever since, writing like crazy, you know, and, and some good books behind me. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Ripperverse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Ripperverse Studios. Next up, possibly our most anticipated book thus far, Yaira.